Hello everyone, I am going to read you a story called The Gruffalo's Child. Now, as you can probably see from this story, it looks really cold because there's snow on the ground. Now, I've heard that it might snow in London this week and if it does, that'll be really exciting and our gardens or our parks might look like this. The Gruffalo said that no Gruffalo should ever set foot in the deep, dark wood. Why not? Why not? Because if you do, the big bad mouse will be after you. I met him once, said the Gruffalo. I met him a long, long time ago. What does he look like? Tell us, Dad. Is he terribly big? Is he terribly bad? And I can see that the Gruffalo's child is holding a stick person in this photo. I can't quite remember, the Gruffalo said. Then he thought for a minute and he scratched his head. The big bad mouse is terribly strong and he has a scaly tail that is terribly long. His eyes are like pools of terrible fire and his terrible whiskers are tougher than wire. One snowy night, when the Gruffalo snored, the Gruffalo's child was feeling bored. The Gruffalo's child was feeling brave, so she tiptoed out of the Gruffalo cave. The snow fell fast and the wind blew wild. Into the wood went the Gruffalo's child. Aha! Oh, a trail in the snow. Whose is this trail and where does it go? A tail poked out of a log pile house. Could this be the tail of the big bad mouse? Out slid the creature. His eyes were small and he didn't have whiskers. No, none at all. You're not the mouse. Not I, said the snake. He's down by the lake eating gruffalo cake. The snow fell fast and the wind blew wild. I'm not scared, said the Gruffalo child. Aha, ooh -hoo, marks in the snow. Whose are these claw marks and where do they go? Two eyes gleamed out of a treetop house. Could these be the eyes of the big bad mouse? Down flew the creature. His tail was short and he didn't have whiskers of any sort. You're not the mouse. To who? Not I. But he's somewhere nearby eating gruffalo pie. The snow fell fast and the wind blew wild. I'm not scared, said the gruffalo's child. Aha! Ooh -hoo, a track in the snow. Who is this track and where does it go? Whiskers at last, and an underground house. Could this be the home of the big bad mouse? Out slunk the creature, his eyes weren't fiery, his tail wasn't scaly and his whiskers weren't wiry. You're not the mouse. Oh no, not me. He's under a tree drinking gruffalo tea. It's all a trick, said the Gruffalo's child, as she sat on a stump where the snow lay piled. I don't believe in the big bad mouse. But here comes a little one out of his house. Not big, not bad, but a mouse at least. You'll taste good as a midnight beast. Wait, said the mouse, before you eat, there's a friend of mine you ought to meet. If you'll let me hop onto a hazel twig, I'll beckon my friends so bad and big. The Gruffalo's child unclenched her fist. The big bad mouse, so he does exist. The mouse hopped into the hazel tree. He beckoned then said, just wait and see. Out came the moon. 
It was bright and round. A terrible shadow fell on the ground. Who is this creature so big, bad and strong? His tail and his whiskers are terribly long. His ears are enormous and over his shoulder he carries a nut as big as a boulder. The big bad mouse, yelled the Gruffalo's child. The mouse jumped down from the twig and smiled. Aha! Ooh -hoo, prince in the snow. Whose are these footprints and where do they go? The footprints led to the Gruffalo's cave where the Gruffalo's child was a little less brave. The Gruffalo's child was a little less bored. And the Gruffalo snored and snored and snored. And that is the end of our very cold and snowy story. Bye guys.